She just asked me if I wanted it in or out. Pardon? <laughs> going to have to buy me dinner first. Um, hi, how are you? Uh, let's play a game. Okay, for the next five minutes, I want all of you to pretend that I am not a mid-manager having a midlife crisis living out her stand-up comedy dreams. Okay, can you do that for me, please and thank you? Um, but I am a medium and an end-of-life doula. Does anyone know what that is? And hand, show of hands? Yeah? Okay, so birth doulas help you on the way in. Death doulas help you on the way out. All right, so I've got a spring special going on right now, actually. <laughs> so I will help you plan your final transition at the appropriate time. And then I will help you talk to your loved ones from the other side. It's called the Let's Keep in Touch promotion. <laughs> and if you just enter the promo code One Stop Shopping on my website, you'll get the 15% discount. So um, one thing I get asked as a medium all of the time, of course, is can my dead relatives see me if I'm naked or if I'm having sex? Yes, the answer is yes. But these are your family, so for the most part, they know when to not stop by, right? What you gotta worry about is the fact that everybody else's relatives can drop by your bedroom at any time. <laughs> they might show up with some popcorn, maybe some scorecards, rating your performance like it's the Olympics, right? Yeah. The other thing too, a lot of skeptics will say that um, mediums are faking it. I, I don't fake mediumship, but I fake some other things. But anyway, um, but uh, so here's the thing. I know some things about people I have never met that I have no right to know. So either I'm psychic or I'm employed by the Chinese government. <laughs> Speaking of China, did you know that they just sent two giant pandas to the city of San Francisco Zoo as a sign of friendship with the promise of more to come? Does anyone else find this suspicious? <laughs> I can see the headline now, right? U.S. intelligence undermined by Trojan pandas. <laughs> Just some government official standing there at a podium going, oh, we should have checked them for zippers. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't intend to be a medium, nor a manager. Um, I wanted to be a nun when I was a kid. I was inspired by Mother Teresa, yes till I realized it wasn't just about being a good person. There were like vows involved and there was commitment, God forbid. So I let it go. But then I realized, if you think about it, I now live on a single income in the most expensive city in the world. So here's the poverty line and here's me tap dancing on it every day. <laughs> Vow number one. Uh, number two, let's see. I haven't had a date since 2017 and I've started collecting cats. So hitting the chastity, boom, out of the park. Thank you. And I do actually have a corporate gig that I hate, but I do what I'm told so that I can at least make enough to feed my cats. Very <laughs> obedient. So all of you people are welcome because I have been praying for your souls. May the Lord bless you and keep you because I am now a nun. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I've been told uh, that I give off some pretty harsh mom vibes. People always assume that I have kids. I really hate kids, like a lot, a lot. There are so many things that are better than kids. <laughs> pets, pets are better than kids. I'll give you one reason why, crates. <laughs> I have an eight month old puppy. I teach puppy, go in the crate, good boy. I am a responsible pet owner. I crate train a toddler. Suddenly I'm mother, like, mommy dearest. What does that mean? <laughs> oh. So um, anyway, being a nun and living in poverty, I've decided that I need a side hustle. So like my good friend Christine, I'm going into porn. <laughs> but I have a niche market, OK? So I have pretty bad OCD. So before I, anyone else, I have, before I leave the house, I have to touch everything. I have to check everything, make sure it's off before I'm allowed to leave. So I recently started taking video of myself doing this so that I had proof that I had checked everything. Except now, when you flip through my phone, there are hours of content of my hand engaged in fetish appliance porn. It's just my hand flicking the lights on and off. Just my hand plugging in the coffee pot and unplugging the coffee pot. Just my hand making love to my stove and spanking the burners, making sure they're off. Oh, I'm going to be rich. 
Uh, yeah. Speaking of fetishes, actually, um, there's a guy in Texas who gave us a very unsettling answer to uh, the question of what do Scottish men keep under their kilts? Yeah, he was arrested recently in an antique store for taking items off the shelf, sticking him up his atus, and then putting them back on the shelf. <laughs> it's a true story. I was disgusted, and I was very, very judgmental about this man till I remembered. I've had a little backdoor nookie with a guy 20 years my senior. Talk about antiques up the butt. <laughs> Not very nun-like, admittedly. I had to go to confession twice for that one. So there you go. Uh, that's my time, you guys. Thank you. Yeah.